morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on your time zone. You are watching Seeds for You by Sherry. And if we're meeting for the first time, I'm Sherry. If you're one of those people who are keeping up with the times, then you're in the know about the trending sex doll brothels that are popping up in various locations all over in places like Barcelona, which by the way started this trend, Italy, Paris, Europe, Asia, Japan, and even attempted in Houston, Texas, which I'm going to talk a little bit about because I actually live here in Texas. Okay, Canadian owner of Kinky S Dolls was met with pushback by the city mayor and Christian anti-sex trafficking and anti-pornography groups. Nevertheless, in nondescript bedrooms and undisclosed areas, dolls are being sterilized and prepped daily for services. Now, as controversial as that might be, it's a growing trend and we're going to talk about it all right here including the cost the sanitation as it pertains to these to the dolls hygiene the laws and the dangers that are involved but before we get into that hit that subscribe button below and the notification bell so that you are notified anytime I post new content and by all means like if you find value in this video share and comment Leave me a comment. Let me know that you were here. Now, hold on a minute. Don't go anywhere. You have to stay to the end of the video so that you can learn more. Welcome back to my channel. Now, let's begin by talking about some of the selling points of the sex doll brothels. We'll begin by talking about the customization. Okay, customers who are interested in becoming a personal owner of these dolls, they can do so and they have uh, the opportunity to uh, customize the doll to their own personal taste. Like uh, you can choose the color of their hair, you can choose eye color, you can choose nationality and body types. So if you like the little small petite ones or the four figured ones or even ones that are pregnant. Yeah. Now, customized dolls are quite pricey, by the way, but, you know, cost is not going to uh, stop anyone from buying one if they're really interested in having one. All right. It doesn't deter them one bit. All right. So there are always going to be some issues, just like with anything else. There are always pros and cons. You're always going to have an issue. So while the makers of these dolls and brothel owners paint a glamorized picture of the benefits of having a sex doll or having a sex doll brothels, there are dangers involved. And one of the dangers is the consent issue. Now you might think, consent issue? How could that be an issue with a doll? Well, the dolls are not able to say what can and cannot be done to them. And because there are no limitations on the fantasy fulfillment, responsive sex bots, robots, sex bot, get it? <laughs> you get it. They can increase, not lower, the demand for human prostitution and embolden men to practice and act out their desire for violent and non-consensual sex, resulting in dehumanizing behavior such as rape. Manufacturers and brothel owners, they do not want the general public to view these men as misogynists but rather as men who are seeking an outlet without bringing harm to anyone or without cheating in a relationship. Now owners would have us to believe that this is a benefit that helps the socially impaired and decreases trafficking. Decreases trafficking? I have a problem with that one. But to aid to their defense, they reveal that they receive a lot of inquiries from the visually impaired and the hard of hearing. And therefore, they use this as a moral compass. It is their belief that these dolls can provide an alternative for the dedicated and the loyal people who are in unsatisfying relationships or sexless marriages, but they have no desire to violate their vows. Contrary to that belief, non-normative preferences can be far more damaging. Hmm. The next thing we should discuss are the economics of this. Bottom line, sex doll brothels are about economics, period. They save their owners money because the owners don't have to pay the dolls like they would at a human brothel. 
As a matter of fact, in 2020, the sex toy industry was valued at 28.64 billion US dollars, experiencing an increase of 26% growth during the pandemic lockdown. It's a very gray area because the sex doll brothels are legal in many countries where human brothels are not. Now I said that I was gonna talk about Houston, and so I wanna talk about the pushback, a little bit about how that went. Knowing what we know so far, there was no wonder that there was a lot of controversy surrounding the plans to open a doll brothel in Houston. Now, as I previously stated, the Canadian owner of Kinky S Dolls, which is just one of one of the owners of, of those dolls, there's also Lumi Dolls and you know plenty of others out there. Uh, but anyway, they were met with pushback from the city mayor and religious groups. Now, communities like Houston believe that this will harm marriages and ruin the reputation of the city. Now, brawler owners would argue, or they do argue, that this helps rather than harms marriages because these dolls can serve as an outlet for mental stress and prevent adultery. Further, owners would love for us to believe that dial brothels are decreasing trafficking. There it is again. Again, I have a problem with that. But if manufacturers are allowed to create, sell, and promote dolls that look like young girls, I am pretty sure that we are going to see increased desire for prostitution and trafficking of underage girls. In 2018, council member Greg Travis of District G said, this type of enterprise degrades the city and we are not a sin city. Former council member Brenda Stardig of District A said, we don't want to be known worldwide for these things. We don't want these things happening here. Meanwhile, the demand for brothels is so pervasive in Houston that it has been said by an official that there are more brothels than Starbucks. As a matter of fact, there can be up to 400 brothels operating according to Robert Sanborn, President and CEO of Children at Risk. The most startling part of this vice is that it's a cover for trafficking. Not only is there an issue with doll brothels, but it works hand in hand with trafficking. The Houston Chronicles reported that 313,000 Texans are human trafficking. One case revealed that women, young women are lured to a particular family with the promise that they can work for the uh, family restaurant that does not even exist. Once these girls are there, they are tattooed with their pimp's name like cattle, and then they're forced into prostitution to pay for a trafficking debt. Now, isn't that something? This is a debt that they didn't even make, but now they owe it. Huh. Not only that, they're competing with Android prostitution. Now, despite humans' pushback, Gerald Treese, a legal analyst professor confirmed that doll brothels don't violate most state prostitution laws as long as it is not displayed in public view. Trees indicated that there was little that the city can even do about it. The most they could do is deem it as a public nuisance and have it moved to a red light district. Trees acknowledged that while sex doll brothels may be offensive, they are not illegal and they're protected by the First Amendment. Now, to combat that right, Houston amended an ordinance forbidding patrons from engaging in sexual activities with any inanimate objects in a business. Now, I thought that was pretty smart because there are always pros and cons, there are always the do's and the don'ts, but the bottom line is if you have the right language, you can get whatever you want. They were able to turn it around by changing the language in an ordinance. Okay, so now that we've been talking about all that, I'm sure you're pretty curious about what would be the cost to purchase one of these dolls. <laughs> a doll like this will cost you a whopping $5,999. I always wonder why they put the 99 on the end of every price. Why not just round it up to the next dollar? The dollar is $6,000. But to lure buyers, manufacturers offer a rent-before-you-buy trial run. <laughs> Not because the price was going to turn them off, 
but to entice them a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Now, what would be the cost for a service with one of these dolls in a brothel? Well, in Toronto, it would cost you $120 for one hour, $90 for a half hour. And if you happen to run late, end in a session, it's going to cost you another $90 for every, every half hour that you go over your time. But for big spenders, that's just a drop in the bucket. <laughs> if they go in and get intoxicated and stay for a few days or even a week, they can come out of there having spent thousands. Yeah, in actuality, this really happens. Now, I know that you're thinking that these are dolls. And so some people probably feel like, hmm, this is, this is better than being with a human because uh, this doesn't expose me to any health risk. Well, contrary to what people choose to believe, health risks are prevalent. STDs are still a risk even with silicone prostitution. The risks are not lowered even though the doll brothel staff work frantically to sterilize and clean these dolls up in between appointments to make sure that they are back up to hygiene standards. Daytime television, the doctors, confirm that these dolls are no more than depositories for STDs. Stating that repeated use around the clock subject clients to bacteria STDs, viral STDs, and MRSA for staph infections. Now let's be real. We know that everyone is not using safe sex in this brothel. They're supposed to. But come on now. We know they're not doing that in this place. Now, if we take a deeper look at this industry as a whole, we will find that many of the human sex workers are becoming a little bit concerned that the androids are going to replace them as predicted in 2030. Now, an hour with a doll is less expensive than an hour with a human. And some of these workers are already experiencing a decline in their customers. But not all of the human workers are concerned. Some of them feel like that no matter what, they will never be replaced because these androids cannot offer emotional labor. And some clients or customers only want to cuddle and just talk. Even manufacturers feel that the sex bots even with their advanced intelligence, with blinking eyes, facial expressions, responsive language, head and joint movement, along with warm bodies, will never replace humans. Now, even with that being an assumption, there are some men who have elected to make a life with these dolls. And what I mean by that is that they go so far as to legally marry their sex doll. If you don't believe me, you can look it up. Just Google it. It's there. That's how I found out. All right. Now, some of the reasons that they gave for making a decision like that is that they said that the dolls don't say mean things. And they don't expect anything in return. So in that case, they are very satisfied. And they wouldn't trade their doll for a human, even if the opportunity presented itself. They said that the dolls provide satisfying companionship. They enjoy buying them clothes. They enjoy dressing them, buying wigs, combing their hair, doing their makeup, and even taking family photos. Just like a real family. And it doesn't stop there. They'll take them fishing with them and various other places. They watch movies with them and they talk to their doll. It's just like a real family, but with a doll. Now, in Japan, this would not seem creepy at all because they believe that everything living and non-living has a soul but that's another video now since doll brothels don't violate most prostitution laws are shutdowns even possible well public outcry and moral pressure has succeeded in getting some of these brothels closed like in places like hong kong and england they were forced to close their doors, shut down, and then some were forced in to move to different locations where only their clients uh, would have known where they are located. A lot of these places are very secretive about their location, understandably. Okay, so there is so much more to share, so much more to know about this topic, but I'm not here to take up all your time. 
I just wanted to uh, bring awareness to the matter if you and you know if you didn't know now you know so I just thought I would share it with you today so if you found value in today's video please like share and comment I really want to hear from you you can ask questions or you can even tell me if you want to hear about a different topic I'll be happy to do the research but please let me know that you are there I want to thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you here in the next video Goodbye! <laughs>